Freedom of Information Act. Now, look, that's my wish list. The question is, why isn't this happening? Or why hasn't it happened? And I'd like to divide that into just two parts. First, I'd like to look at the electorate. What role does the electorate play in the actual stasis, which is what I would call it, in terms of political reform and deeper democratization in the Bahamas? One, I think we have obviously a problem of political tribalism, very intense party loyalty, almost genealogical. People believe that this is their family is PLP or FNM, and so every child born into that household must be PLP and FNM, and that loyalty trumps even innovations which would improve the whole electoral process. In other words, if the leader of my party says we are not going to have debates, even though I want to see debates, because I must demonstrate my loyalty to my party, I support the leader, there will be no debates. Two, there is a lack in our, we have no culture of non-partisan activism in our society. Uh, or or that, that muscle isn't well practiced in the Bahamas. Um, also, political parties that have tried to advance reform agendas simply don't have the brand confidence, don't have the confidence of the public. Um, they're not able to attract the same type of resources or the same talent that the two established parties are able to, uh, to offer. And so the public, doesn't, the public doesn't make a decision based on your innovative ideas. They make a decision based on whether they think you are going to provide for them a secure future. And obviously, also we have to admit too, there's a fair amount of patronage involved. So in other words, people still have a sort of what is in it for me attitude, and that again trumps any kind of deepening of democracy. People also in the public have a limited notion of citizenship. Bahamians believe that their power as a citizen is vested in an election every five years. And then they have no power until the next five years. They don't actually see that as citizens they have a role to play in holding government accountable. They believe that their only real moment in which they can hold a government account punish or reward a government is election day. And um, then we come to the actual elected officials. Well, first of all, we have to ask ourselves the question, do our leaders see it as in their best interest to bring about a deeper democratization of our processes, to bring about greater accountability or transparency? And if we look at the weight of the evidence, the answer would seem to be, hell no. Um, Interestingly, I don't believe that this is necessarily generational. I'm not convinced that would-be politicians in their 20s or 30s are necessarily going to be more reform-minded than the 60-year-olds who run the country today. I think that the culture in political parties, in fact, is one which encourages conformity, getting along, and getting in where you fit in. And, um, and I think you can find progressives of every age, 70, 60, 50, 40, or 30. So I don't know if it's really necessarily age specific. Uh, okay, I think you're listening. Okay. Um, the other thing I would, I would say, obviously, is that the system is built in such a way as to facilitate people using the state as a means of economic <laughs> upward mobility, and so greater transparency, greater accountability, these things work against um, that practice, that habit that we have. Interestingly enough, um, the leaders of the political parties did in fact conduct a debate. I don't know if you remember it. How many of you do, by show of hands? Okay, absolutely nobody, or no one's listening. In 2002, Perry Christie and Tommy Turnquist actually had a live debate on radio. Um, that went out of the window in 2007 when Perry Christie squared off against Hubert Ingram. How do I interpret that? Well, I interpret that as in, in this way, that if a political leader 
sees a strategic advantage in a form of, um, I guess you could say, more transparent or progressive uh, electioneering, if they see a strategic advantage in it, they will go for it, perhaps. Um, obviously, Christie felt he had an advantage over Tommy Turnquist in that debate. He did not think so against Ingram, and Ingram, vice versa. Well, I don't know which one of them blinked, but someone blinked. <laughs> Also, too, we have to give the FNM some credit. They did attempt a referendum, which would have introduced some changes, but obviously they lost a strategic advantage in trying to do that because it became very politicized. Some of it by their own, their own doing, but the issue no longer became the reforms. The issue became who will win the next election, which completely undermined the constitutional referendum effort in the first place. And so there seems to be a lack of ability for both political parties to collaborate in terms of introducing better rules um, which, would, which would democratize the process. Um, because they don't trust each other or they cannot resist scratching the itch to politicize something if they see an advantage in it. Um, I left out one last point that I, oh, well, the other, the other thing, of course, too, is that our party politics is geared to protect the leader as opposed to bring about change. These parties are actually built to keep things going as they are, hence the permanent appointment of delegates. And that's going to be very difficult to change. What you have is a situation where members of parliament feel more loyal to the leader who gave them the job than to the people who elected them. And that has everything to do with the process by which they are in fact chosen and elected. Finally, the question is, do Bahamians actually mind the system that they have? Or are they quite content with it? Bahamians enjoy elections. And though they might be entertained by what they see happening in North America, do they really feel that it is important enough to fight for or to insist upon and the answer is probably no, they don't think it's that important. There may be a small sector of people like me, malcontents like Dr. Strawn, who want to see these things happen, but the general public actually either doesn't understand how it works, doesn't see the benefit of changing the process, or is just way too loyal and is more interested in their own individual progress. I will end by giving you my thoughts on how we can go about actually bringing about significant change in our systems of um, our, our democratic systems. First of all, you can elect reformers. You can elect a party that comes out and is very, very direct about saying, we will change X, Y, and Z. If you elect us, this is what we will do. That's more than likely going to be a third party, and that's more than likely not going to work, um, for reasons which, have, which I've already explained. Two, there is the, the, the possibility that a political party, one of the two main political parties, sees a strategic advantage in promising democratizing um, measures. Um, and uh, the FNM has used this in the past to some advantage. Um, the PLP had a constitutional commission. So they, they, they have the capacity to do this. The problem, of course, with that is they may introduce reforms after their own fashion, once they get in power, or they may not introduce them at all. They may conveniently forget that they promised to introduce such things once they get elected. But if they think you really want that, they might promise you that. Third, you could have a parliamentary uprising. In other words, we've had one vote, if I'm not mistaken, there may be students of history here, we've had at least one no confidence vote in our, in our parliament in the last 40 years, um, you could have a situation in which parliamentarians who decide who becomes prime minister could bypass party politics and select a different, more progressive leader to run the country. Not likely either, yes, I know. Um, four, and this one's intriguing. The very people who invest in, in elections, the very people who finance political campaigns may for some reason find it important to make preconditions for their support. They may decide that they will support this 